Major General Pat Ryder, the Pentagon press secretary, said a relatively small number of North Korean troops are now in the Kursk region, where Russia has struggled to push back a Ukrainian incursion. He declined to provide a more precise number. A couple thousand more troops are heading in that direction, he told reporters Tuesday. North Korea said Tuesday its top diplomat is visiting Russia, in another sign of their deepening relations as rival South Korea and Western nations say the North has sent thousands of troops to support Russia's war in Ukraine. North Korea's official Korean Central News Agency said a delegation led by Foreign Minister Cho Sun Hui departed for Russia on Monday, but didn't specify the purpose of the visit. In a closed-door hearing at South Korea's parliament, the South spy agency said Cho may be involved in high-level discussions on sending additional troops to Russia and negotiating what the North would get in return, according to Lee song Kuyen, a lawmaker who attended the meeting. The announcement of Ko's visit came hours after the Pentagon said North Korea has sent to Russia about 10,000 troops, who are likely to fight against Ukraine within the next several weeks. As of right now, you know, it remains to be seen exactly how the Russians and the North Koreans will employ these forces, Ryder said, adding that he expects the deployment to be discussed by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, Secretary of State Antony Blinken and their South Korean counterparts when they meet in Washington this week. South Korean and Western leaders have expressed concern that North Korean involvement could help prolong Russia's aggression in Ukraine and that Russia may offer technology in return that could advance the threat posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons and missile program. South Korea's National Intelligence Service told lawmakers it's examining the possibility that some groups of North Korea's military personnel in Russia, including generals or other high-ranking officials, may have already moved to frontline areas. The spy agency said the two sides appear to be struggling to resolve communication issues, although the Russian military is training North Korean troops on Russian military terminology, Lee said. Everyone, just a few things at the top, and I'll get right to your questions. So per the we believe that the DPRK has sent approximately 10,000 soldiers in total to train in eastern Russia and that these troops will probably augment Russian forces near Ukraine over the next several weeks. Uh, a portion of those soldiers have already moved closer to Ukraine towards Russia's Kursk Oblast near the border with Ukraine, uh, approximately a couple thousand, uh, with a smaller number already present in the Kursk region. Uh, we remain concerned that Russia intends to use these soldiers in combat or to support combat operations against Ukrainian forces in Kursk. Uh, we continue to monitor closely and are consulting with our Ukrainian partners as well as other allies and partners. What's the status? You said a small number already in the Kursk right. Indications that there's already uh, a small number uh, that are actually in the Kursk Oblast um, with a couple thousand more that are uh, either, you know, almost there or due to arrive imminently. Uh, okay. Again, we'll continue to, the, the rest at this time, uh, of course, um, training out in the east, but fully expect that they'll move in that direction at some point. Can you sort of narrow that? Are you talking dozens, hundreds? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into specific numbers other than just to say at this point, uh, we assess it's a, a relatively small number. Troops inside Ukraine right now. So we have no information right now to corroborate the reports that there are DPRK um, forces inside Ukraine. This is an indication of uh, the dire situation that Russia finds itself in, in terms of manpower on the front lines. Uh, they have experienced significant casualties uh, in this war, uh, and the fact that they now need to outsource for foreign troops uh, to help support uh, their forces inside uh, Russia uh, indicates that, that there's some serious questions in terms of their ability to continue to sustain uh, their personnel requirements. This is something that we continue to look at in terms of the relationship between Russia and North Korea uh, and what kinds of benefit is North Korea deriving from that relationship. Somewhat related, uh, I think we're at the there are millions of Palestinians who rely on that aid uh, and so implementing this legislation would pose significant risks for those uh, that are dependent on that aid. 
Uh, and so we will continue to urge the government of Israel to pause implementation of the legislation. The letter that Secretary Austin and Secretary Blinken made quite, quite clear that we're opposed to implementation of that legislation and that there could be consequences under U.S. law and U.S. policy for the implementation. Uh, so again, we'll continue to urge the government of Israel to in, uh, ensure that UNRWA can effectively carry out its mission and facilitate humanitarian assistance. Fully aware of the tensions in the Middle East, uh, and we are going to continue to support the defense of Israel uh, from potential attacks by Iran and its proxies, as well as the protection of our forces. The Wall Street Journal has reported it is possible that North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un might have sent younger soldiers to Russia aged under 20 and without appropriate military training. The publication reports that video evidence and intelligence reports suggest that the North Korean soldiers deployed to Russia are likely young men under the age of 20 who are in the early stages of military conscription. The Wall Street Journal reported that these soldiers' training has focused on assassinations and infrastructure destruction in the mountainous regions of South Korea. A far cry from the trench warfare unfolding in the flat plains along the Ukrainian-Russian border. Most of these recruits have probably never left North Korea and the country's army is equipped with outdated conventional equipment. South Korean Defense Minister Kim Jong-hyun, assessing the military, called them mere cannon fodder mercenaries. The US, South Korea and Ukraine estimate that approximately 3,000 North Korean troops have arrived in Russia this month. Former South Korean defense official James J.B. Park suggests that North Korea's Kim Jong-un may want to first gauge the domestic reaction to this decision, as well as the Kremlin's response by sending what he considers to be a relatively expandable resource. Park believes that if Russian leader Vladimir Putin demands additional reinforcements or Kim decides to fulfill recently strengthened bilateral commitments, these troops will pave the way for more experienced units. The Wall Street Journal also reported that it is still unclear what role the North Korean military will play in Russia's war against Ukraine. Without taking part in hostilities, they could gain experience by observing the use of drones and the conditions of war, especially in cooperation with the Russians who use North Korean munitions and missiles. On the other hand, North Korea's direct involvement in hostilities would signal a dramatic escalation of the conflict, which has been going on for over two years, the US and NATO allies have said. The first North Korean military units that have undergone training at training grounds in eastern Russia have arrived in the war zone. They were spotted in Russia's Kursk Oblast, where Ukrainian forces are conducting an operation. North Korean military personnel whom Russia intends to use in the war against Ukraine have several weeks to train. Ukrainian intelligence added that the number of North Korean troops deployed to Russia is currently around 12,000, including 500 officers, particularly three Pyongyang generals.